Well, joining me now to further discuss the Boston Marathon bomb investigation is criminal defense attorney Ian Wallach. He joins us from uh, Los Angeles. Mr. Wallach, thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you for having me. These pictures that the FBI has released, uh, they seem to, uh, the FBI rather, seems to have purposely uh, been very selective about the information they're giving the public right now. They released these pictures, but they didn't say anything about these two men. They didn't give us any more information, like perhaps their weight, their height, what kind of clothing they were wearing, etc. Why was that? My, my estimation to that is that they are hoping that the information that comes in response is going to help them track down these individuals in a more effective manner. It, it might be better to get a phone call from someone who saw these individuals dressing that morning, et cetera, uh, than try to estimate from a picture. Plus, the pictures, while, while you can identify the people, are still somewhat vague. It's not such easy, uh, such easy identification to, to make from, from those cameras' perspectives. Right. The fact that the FBI are calling these two men suspects, they're not calling them persons of interest, which I guess would indicate that they don't think they were, uh, they were involved in, in this bombing, but the fact that they're calling them suspects, does that uh, give us Yeah, you know, there's definitely a, yeah. Go ahead. A, a higher level of concern about these two individuals. Uh, the, the FBI, who, who is the most reliable source of information, has already stated that people are to consider these individuals armed, they're to consider these individuals, uh, individuals dangerous, you know, whether they're still looking for more and other individuals, that's a separate question, but, but they're calling these individu individual suspects, and we, the general public is to consider these individuals potentially armed, potentially dangerous, and to let the FBI and the relevant authorities handle uh, their apprehension. And one other thing is that the pictures they've released, uh, you know, they edited. Uh, the FBI have a lot more pictures, a lot more tape, which they have. Why did they not release all that tape so even people at the scene may have seen something, may have seen the bag being put down, may have seen people running away? They've not given us that. Well, I'm sure the FBI has fantastic experts, and it's not just the FBI. It's, it's 30 different organizations working together on a phenomenal joint task force. And they can figure out, if um, by releasing certain information and who comes forward, what's the most effective way to get the information that they ultimately need. So I can't really speculate as to, you know, why they didn't uh, release everything. My guess is this targeted information and who responds to them is going to give the FBI and the agencies it's working with the best shot at getting the individuals responsible for this disaster. You know, when we look at bombings of this kind, attacks like this, uh, the fact that no organization has claimed responsibility for it, does that indicate to us that maybe there was no organization behind it, these were two learners who were operating on their own? Yeah, I think there's, there's a couple of different potential interpretations. Yes, that's clearly one. Uh, two, it may show uh, some of the progress that we've had since 9-11. Um, before, you know, after 9-11, whenever there was any type of attack, um, a, a multitude of organizations would take responsibility. Now everyone's sort of staying quieter, which shows that there's, uh, there's greater fear and, and respect of the anti-terrorism movement that's taking place in the United States. But uh, I would agree that, yes, the fact that no one's stepped forward suggests that this is quite possibly an act of, uh, of, of terrorism, by, uh, of domestic terrorism, by people with, you know, who live within the country's borders. Right. One other thing, and this is looking a little bit ahead, but there's been such tremendous pressure on the law enforcement agencies in this country uh, to find those behind these uh, attacks, as well as, you know, there's also been pressure on the media, as we no doubt know. Yes. Uh, uh, well, how does this affect a possible case that might come up uh, in, in the days and weeks ahead? Well, I think in a, in a couple of different ways. First and foremost, the FBI has basically, you know, has stated, they gave a press release uh, yesterday stating that you know, false media reporting, you know, drastically impedes their capacity to do their job and that the media should really stop releasing any information that's not, that's not confirmed because people will stop looking for the people who are ultimately culpable. So, um, you know, so that's, that's a primary concern. Uh, as far as later on down the line, prosecuting individuals who, you know, are eventually, uh, uh, and this is years and years away, these individuals will be caught. Uh, they will be presumed innocent, but they will be brought to a trial, possibly before uh, a court of Massachusetts where they don't have the death penalty, possibly before a court for the United States where they do. Um, that will, will take its natural, its natural cause of action. Uh, I don't think the media messing with it can interfere with the legal process, but it can certainly interfere uh, with the law enforcement process, and that's our primary concern. Ian Wallach, thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you.